Good Monday morning. Today I would like to talk a little bit and muse a little bit on something that I think is one of the absolutely hardest things as a software developer, uh, at least for me personally, and that is asking for help. So, uh, still here in Stockholm. And I'm gonna be for a while moving here. Um, we, I talked a little bit about how we are going to do more of these live mob programming shows, uh, but that's not gonna start in a while because we are still looking for a studio space. Um, and in the meantime, there's gonna be a lot of these walk and talks, which I know a lot of you like, and I like doing them. And uh, I feel like this month is a bit of a musing month, and that's like the start of the new year. <laughs> I'm going to talk about three different um, approaches to how asking for help and giving help is handled in, in software teams and in my experience. Like three different ways where, in three different ways that I've acted and how the teams I've been in have acted. Um, the first one is uh, basically just having no technique at all in it like uh, it's basically when you're doing code archaeology and uh, the, the new person is just thrown into the code base with very little assistance uh, second I'm gonna talk about uh, something that I've come to refer to as the body system where you're assigned a person or a mentor if you will that has some time allocated to help you to, to figure out the project and finally, I'm going to talk about my uh, personal favorite, which is uh, pair programming and mob programming, uh, where you actually sit with uh, a person, a more senior person, more familiar with the code base all the time, and that person constantly assists you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the first approach. First approach to help in a software team is basically no help or very little help. Help when you're desperate. It's, it's when you're doing what I refer to as code archaeology. This, is, this might ha happen if you're in a team that isn't very evolved in their software development practices or if it's a team where like the person before you has just quit or died or something and you're all alone in a new code base and you have no idea what is happening. Uh, you open the, the code base and you have perhaps some task that you're gonna do, perhaps it's vague, uh, and you just try to figure out wildly in the, in the code where, where is this thing and what is this thing and you poke around a little bit and you figure like why is this variable named it this way? I have no idea. Can I change this without breaking things? And yeah, it's, it's no fun at all. There's no and there's no like overview document or like unit test or anything and uh, you basically to find things out uh, you if you're a little lucky you can walk around in the organization and try to like kindly ask people that like, maybe could you perhaps explain this piece of code and they are like oh yeah yeah sure but you're sensing that oh god they're stressed with their own shit and now I'm demanding their time and it's just like it's an excruciatingly, excru <laughs> excruciatingly slow way of working. You're basically doing archaeology. Uh, it's, it's, your work is not really productive teamwork. It's more like you're trying digging out like an ancient civilization with a little brush. You have to do everything so carefully all the time in order, like, not in order to not break these little pristine ancient things that you find inside of this these ruins in ancient Egypt it's uh, it's it's not a fun way of working but we've all been there uh, it's it's something that you sometimes have to do because well it's where the workplace is or that's where you are in in your career um, or um, it's sometimes you, you just have to do this but this is not good this is not how how a well-functioning software team works um, the more uh, well-functioning teams that I worked in uh, have sometimes worked with something 
like a body system and uh, I'm gonna move to another location and talk about that. The body system uh, is what it sounds like. You're, um, it it uh, happened to me the first time I, I joined Spotify where I was assigned uh, a buddy which was named Martin that uh, he, he turned out to be a good friend like eventually over at Spotify as well. He was like such a super nice guy. Um, but the, the buddy is basically this person that they have been allocate, allocated time from their normal work duties to to help you like they're like yeah we know you're gonna help this new uh, developer on the project uh, and uh, uh, we we are expecting you to not move as fast as a result because you're gonna make yourself available to them you're gonna be interrupted all the time and that's the way it's it's gonna be and you are also and this is important you are also expected to encourage uh, your new developer to interrupt you and to ask you questions because I think it's very important here to address that it's not natural to want to ask questions when you're in a in a new position like you you very much feel the need to prove yourself that you can take care of these things and that you are like mm, I'm a good developer I'm a, like uh, you might even be a senior developer, uh, actually. Like just because you're new in a code base or, or a project or, uh, or or perhaps a library that you're working on, but you're unfamiliar with that, um, you might be very senior. And in those cases, it's even harder to ask for help sometimes because you have worked for the in in this field for so long, or perhaps in this company for so long that it just feels like you should. You should magically know it, which is absurd, of course, but that's what it feels like. So you don't ask for help or you wait way too long to ask for help. You just waste half a day uh, to figure something out that uh, when you ask the person, like, they say like, no, 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 you couldn't possibly have figured that out. It's because this thing that happened two years ago uh, before you joined, uh, where this customer asked for this and this and this, and you like, okay now this makes sense why you did it this way uh, and uh, it's it's easy to fall into the trap like of, of banging your head against things for too long uh, I mean I often talk about how software development is about that about solving that you, that software development is about banging your head against the problem till it breaks and, and it's a lot about tenacity uh, but um, it's it's also about um, also about asking for help because there there is uh, you cannot just intuit yourself uh, into knowledge that only exists in the heads of, of your colleagues. You don't know the history of the organization. You don't know the the general patterns used in, in this project. You don't know that yet, but your colleagues might. So make sure that you use them, even though it might be feel unintuitive because you want to prove yourself. You think it's safe? Like they, like he's walking with his kid over there. Yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> Have not. The part with parents <laughs> that allow a kid to die in the ice. Yeah. Thing. This is Sweden, but I guess it's a civilized thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. In case you didn't catch it yet, we're walking on the ice in the middle of Stockholm. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Death yeah. by ice. Awesome. All right, where was I? Um, oh yeah, uh, the buddy system. So the buddy system is uh, its great, it's easy to implement um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think that the best, best thing that I've always experienced in all software projects where that has always been absolutely marvelous when I've done it is pair programming. Uh, and uh, pair programming for the ones that you're not fam aren't familiar with it is when one person acts as a navigator and one person acts as a driver. 
Um, the responsibility of the driver is the one that is actually holding the keyboard, like for, well, has the hands on the keyboard and, and types the code. Um, while the navigator is the person that is keeping tabs a little bit more on the direction and where you are in the project and what you're supposed to do, like that you're not getting distracted and uh, like that person is a, little, is a little less focused on syntax and, and typing and more focused on architecture and um, getting the tasks done. Uh, and in the, uh, uh, I, th I think it's very, very useful to have a navigator that is familiar with the project uh, and the driver being the one unfamiliar with the project. And that's a very good way of being introduced to the project. Like um, the navigator can constantly assist you in saying like, yeah, uh, now we're gonna change like this little part in the system and this little part in the system. Do you think that you can type or like figure out how to do this here and like gradually assist you through things. Um, and uh, I find that even if you put pair programming aside and just talk about the concept of code review, code review is one of the best uh, best ways to introduce people to a new code base. Like I think that code, many miss that uh, knowledge sharing is one of the greatest benefits of code review. Like you're pushing like your fix and then uh, people can say like, yeah, this is great. I understand why you thought this way, but um, we already have this library that you can use to do this uh, or uh, this way of doing it is great, but it's not idiomatic to what we do in the project. So if you do it, look at this part of the code, you can see how we, de how we do it in the project and that makes it more consistent and easier to deal with. Um, it's not that your, your way is bad, uh, but it's just nice to have things consistent and have that kind of knowledge sharing. If you don't do code review in your team, um, that doesn't happen. And one of the nicest things about um, but pair programming, pair, pair programming, pair program, is that you're doing code review all the time, all the time. It's happening all the time, every second. Uh, and in the same way, uh, pair programming also means that you're helping all the time. In the in the archaeology pattern, you're uh, you're basically just asking for help at a point where it's like so obvious that you have been stuck maybe maybe you've been stuck for days until you you actually go and, and get, make time with a uh, with perhaps a lead architect or something um, it can waste a lot of time um, and the body system is also i mean it can still take a lot of time i mean i try to say that when i have a, access to a body i still try to uh, not interrupt them constantly uh, i try to like still uh, have a little time limit on myself like just arbitrary like 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes just like some kind of time box where I'm not allow I, I'm not allowing myself to get stuck more than that uh, and then I ask because even though the person is is allocated to me uh, and have time allocated to me I just I, I can't it's it's not designed to allow me to interrupt uh, them at every single single point uh, however when it comes to pair programming you have like this massive constant access to a person where the person can help you at any time I mean it's still good for the navigator to allow the driver if the driver is new in the project to to figure things out on their own for a little bit like it it's not a lot of, like it's not good to like basically type for the person verbally like type var like that's not good navigating but it's really good that to have a navigator that is like, okay, you're getting stuck. Can I give you a hint? Uh, and that is marvelously productive. Uh, when I'm doing pair programming, uh, it is so extremely rare to get properly stuck. And by properly stuck, I mean when you are just, you have no idea how for, to progress. You just, you have been staring at the code for perhaps hours and you don't know what's wrong. You, you move things around and you just don't see the issue. 
um, and then you perhaps you just give up go home and then you come back the next day and look at it with fresh eyes or perhaps you just have a co-worker over and, and have them look at it and you figure out the problem immediately because it was just some little thing missing it just wasn't visible to you uh, it was obvious in hindsight but yeah. uh, and with pair programming I almost never find myself in those situations it's so rare because the likelihood that two people two different brains looking at the same code that they would miss the same problem is so incredibly unlikely uh, and it's even more unlikely if you're doing mob programming where you have an entire team uh, being like the the navigators um, I haven't done that too much but it's super cool and um, yeah uh, I like pro pair programming a lot so those are the three things like the three ways I think about when I, I think about asking for help and giving help in a software team uh, like the uh, the archaeology pattern or technique where you you don't don't really you don't have access to much help uh, maybe like you just have to like oh ask the, soft, the, the, the senior architecture like, hey you can help me and uh, but you feel bad about it uh, and uh, then you have the buddy system where you are a located person uh, and then you have the pair programming system where like you're actually always sitting down with somebody more familiar with the code base than you and you you figure things out together in, in unison uh, finally I I would like to make a little plea to software senior software developers or rather people that are in in senior positions that you've been in a company for a while at when a new person joins uh, your team or your company or where some or when it might be a new develop completely new developer junior developer or it might be a senior developer helping out with a project or something uh, make sure that that per like that you make yourself available to that person uh, or assign somebody to help that person and think about how to get that person up to speed as much as possible and don't let them don't drop them like some archaeology person in uh, in the project and let them swim for themselves that's not a productive way um, and don't express any annoyment when they ask about things encourage them to ask things uh, and when they do uh, like say like so good that you went to me and asked about this that's really good um, don't be that person who is annoyed even if you feel it feel it you should never express that because that will discourage them and that will cause your software team to be extremely inefficient you know, there will be a lot of waste and if you disagree with this and if you're uh, like if you feel feel a that annoyed when you're if you're being feel like oh I don't want to help this person because it distracts me from my work and my I, I want to solve issues like I I have some news for you like you're not a you aren't a senior developer yet um, because the role of a senior developer like one of the most important roles uh, tasks that you have is to make sure like to lift the developers around you to make sure that the the junior developers around you are getting productive and getting up to speed and getting them started because the the only way to really be a 10x developer or a 100x developer is to improve developers around you you're, you're eventually going to be limited in your abilities but when you build a software organization if you are a person strengthening others then then you are truly a person that can ex be explosive in your productivity and the value you add to an organization so make sure that you help the people around you that's that's the the true value of a, of a strong senior developer this episode is sponsored by quokka it's a little inline evaluation thing that you often see me use in the episodes. Uh, we are very proud to be pushing them because I, I just love it as a product. 
uh, it's great when you're just trying out and prototyping things or when you are running a YouTube channel and you want to just show quickly show like things how JavaScript evaluates. It's really great. If you want to check it out, um, you can check it out at quokka.funfunfunction.com so that they knew, know that you came from here. Uh, you can also uh, see uh, me using it in this video here um, to check it out and have a feel for, for how it works. It's really great. quokka.funfunfunction.com And that's it for today. Uh, I hope that was useful to you. Like that. Did you disagree? Did you agree? How, do you have uh, other approaches to helping people? What's your experience in your career with help? Um, please type it in the comments. Uh, I read all of them. You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. Uh, but you will forget that, so make sure that you subscribe or uh, watch another episode right now by clicking here if you're unsure. Bye, MMPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.